So Metabox have recently released Metabox Lite, which is a kind of updated version of their free plugin. But with it, they brought in the ability now to have a much more friendly UI. Part of the kind of function you have as part of the pro version is you have a more user-friendly interface to work with. They've kind of brought that in now to the light version. They've also opened up some additional features, which are opening this up to make it quite a viable solution if you don't have the money to spend on a pro or premium version like Advanced Custom Fields Pro, Metabox Pro, and so on. So what do you get out of the box? Well, you get quite a lot, to be honest. You can register custom post types, create taxonomies, create meta fields, the things you'd expect to be able to do. But also you've got some features inside you that are more premium. You've got relationships, which can work in bi-directional ways and so on. You've also got the ability to kind of keep, create sort of repeater fields, not repeater regions, repeater fields. So you can have multiple iterations of the same field. This can be useful in a lot of use cases. The thing I was more interested in though is, would this work straight out the box with a tool like Bricks Builder and probably Elemental Pro and so on? So I've installed it, I've tested a few things out and taken a look at it. And to be honest, it's quite a useful little platform. So what I want to do in this video is just briefly go over and demonstrate what you have, how it works inside Bricks Builder itself, and you kind of get a feel for it. But before I go any further, I do want to open it up to you guys. If you want to see more about working with this, creating some content using Metabox Lite, let me know in the comment section down below. But let also let me know what kind of things you'd like me to cover with Metabox Lite. Things like the relationships, the repeater fields, building something specific with bricks, let me know in the comment section down below. And if enough people are interested, I'll create some content on it. I'll also give you my kind of feedback at the end of the video, how it compares to some of the other tools that I'm more familiar with, and you know, just give you my thoughts on it. So once you've installed the Metabox Lite plugin, link in the description, you'll get a new entry inside your dashboard for Metabox itself. And inside there, we currently have a range of different options, most of which you probably are going to be more than familiar with. Your dashboard kind of gives you an overview of what actual Metabox Lite offers with some videos and some links through to various different things. Post types, as you would expect, allow you to create post types. I've created a couple already in my testing. This is my testing set of setup. I've created some relationships to see how it all works and so on. But let's go and create a new post type and I'll show you the process and kind of give you my feedback as we go through. So we'll add a new post type. This gives us the interface now, and this is where you get that more sort of UI, UX kind of experience. It's a bit more focused on making it more friendly, less developer focused if you get the idea. So what we can do is we can go through the simple process of creating our custom post type. So let's call this one, we'll call it estate agents, and estate agent for the singular. Hop over to labels, you can see all the normal Options are available here, so if you want to set up any custom labels, you can do, but as we see, pretty much everything is filled out for you, and in most use cases, more than enough. Hop into advanced, and this is where you kind of have more of the options available. So if you want to pop in your description, want to set this to public and so on, set it to be hierarchical, if you want to exclude from a search, if you've used advanced custom fields in the past, the free version or the premium version, these options are going to be very familiar. However, Metabox does give you some additional options that I haven't seen inside a tool like ACF. So these are kind of useful options. So we say, yeah, showing the UI, set our dash icons, you know, we'll just set something up in here. It doesn't really matter what we do. We'll use this user, for example. Okay, showing nav menu, showing admin bar, showing the rest, using the rest API and so on, the capabilities, enable your archives, which we'd need to if you want to create an archive for it. And you can drop in your custom archive as well. So again, like I said, nothing you haven't seen inside something like ACF. I do like the prepend permalink structure. If you want to control your permalink structure, you can do that here. Query variables, choose whether you can export it or delete it with the user itself. Again, all familiar options from ACF. Supports, again, we can choose what native WordPress functions are supported here. So by default, your title editor and thumbnail, all the things you're used to. Taxonomies, again, yep, we've seen all this before. You can link it to any taxonomies created. And if you go to features, a nice little nifty thing here is you can use the reorder posts options. If you enable that, you can drag and drop around your posts. Saves, again, one of those extra little plugins being added in. And then we can just simply click on publish or you can get the PHP code. So if you don't want to use this, you can just get the PHP code, insert that in using the code snippet plugin or use you know, your functions PHP, whatever you want to do, and you can insert the code in there. 
If we hit publish, that will show us everything has been done. And as you can see, post type published, add custom fields to this post type. So it's very, very akin to working with something like ACF Free or Pro. I do appreciate the fact this is a lot nicer, a lot more sort of user friendly. So if you are new to moving over to something like working with custom post types and meta fields and taxonomies and all those kinds of things, this is a much nicer place to work. It's a lot more familiar, a lot more like working with ACF. Okay, so once you've done that, you can pop into your taxonomy, your custom fields, relationships, and so on. So we jump into custom fields. You can see I've already created a couple. Let's go and add a new field group in, and we'll call this agent details. Now, this is one of the first things that I'm not so fussed on when it comes to working with uh, Metabox Lite is this doesn't feel quite as polished as the creating post types does. Let me demonstrate what I'm talking about. So far, everything looks cool. Add a field in. Choose your field. OK, this is all right. It's not too bad. Let's just say we want to pop in. We'll go for a number. Choose that from the list. We'll use this for a phone number. So the first thing is you can see number is inserted in there. This doesn't feel particularly user-friendly. Everything is still closed down. I would much rather see that once you add a field in, this is already opened up, ready for you to insert the name of the field in there. Not a big fan. But, you know, semantics. So we'll say agent telephone. And you click and it opens up. I'd like to see this sort of condensed into a little bit, maybe a couple more tabs just to make it a little less sort of, whoa, there's a lot going on there. Again, this is probably more focused to newer users. Once you become familiar with it, you pay no attention, you just get stuck in. But yeah, it would be nice. Uh, number type. Now, if we open this up, you can see there's a lot of options here. I think there's 40 different options available in the free version, which, like I say, is a lot of options to give you most things that most users will probably want to do when it comes to building out, you know, custom meta fields, taxonomies, and organizing your content and things like that. If you want more, obviously, then you've got the pro or premium version, you know, of this and most plugins. But as you can see, there's a lot here. It's good to see how much is available here. Let's say we're happy with everything there. You can pop in your labels, your input description, and so on. Again, most things that need it have got a little help option there. Some of these maybe, you know, could be a little bit more descriptive. But uh, yeah, they do the job. This is where you kind of get your repeater option, which is you make something clonable. Now, in this example, it doesn't make sense, but let's open it up and take a look anyway. Once you do, it opens up some additional options. Do you want to make them sortable? Can you clone, have a clone default value, a clone multiple, the minimum number of clones, the maximum number of clones? So you may want to limit this to only a set number. Pretty cool. Add more text, you can change that as well. And if you want to hide this from the REST API. I like this. It's not as flexible as working with something like the repeater region where you can have multiple fields. This is just an individual single field. But in a lot of cases, that might be all you need. And using a repeater region is a little bit overkill. And it works really simply inside Brick Builder itself as well. Let's disable that for now. And we'll say we're happy. You can pop into advanced. And inside there, we can set up some information for before and after any custom CSS classes. Custom sanitize callback, so you can sanitize data and so on. Uh, you can apply custom validation rules inside your custom settings and things, which is pretty nifty. And like I say, for a free plugin, this gives you an awful lot of functionality straight out of the box without any money whatsoever. Let's add one more in here. So let's just click to kind of minimize this. Again, it's not that intuitive that you've got to click, and you click and it edits it, and then you click outside it, it opens it. It's a little bit less intuitive. I'd like to see this just tidied up a little bit. Let's add one more in. Let's just say we'll add an email field in. Give that a name. Set any values and things you want inside there, required, and so on. All those kinds of things we've just seen. Click outside, and we'll say we're happy with that. Let's pop into settings, and we can now specify where this is connected up to. Again, I would like to see like these kind of options be a little bit more obvious, because if you're new to working with this, you might not even know that you've got to connect this up to something. Might sound silly, and when you're used to doing it, it becomes second nature. But the thing I like about working with ACF Freehour Pro is at the bottom of the screen, we then got the how you connect this up. It's all there in front of you. It's not a separate sort of section. Change this from post type of post. We'll change this over to state agent. You can choose where it is, how it's sort of set up after content to the side and so on. I set this to the side. You know, some options there. If you want to customize the settings, you can do. Hit publish. And we've now created that. And there's the little bit of code if you want to use it for the agent's email, the telephone number, and so on. So that's pretty cool. And if we go over now to our agents, add a new estate agent, you can see over on the right-hand side, there's our agent telephone, agent email, 
you get the idea. Okay, so that's how easy that side of things are. Let's pop into the relationships. And you can see I've created a relationship here between the agent and the property. If we expand this out, you can see we've got a selection of different ways in which we can work. I do like this delete data in the database. So delete data, if the relationship is deleted. So if you remove this, say you're testing something out, that data is then stripped out of the database. I always like to see that option. Yes, it can be a little bit dangerous, and I would like to see the option to say, maybe you have to be an administrator or something to, so you don't accidentally sort of set this option and delete things by accident. Reciprocal relationship, enable only if two sides of the relationship are the same. So in other words, you can have your bi-directional kind of relationships. And then you can set things up, your from and your to, how things are related to each other. So you can see my object type is a post, it's an agency, and it's connected to the property and so on. You can go into the meta box, and you can set various options inside here fields, mapping, and all those kinds of good things. Now, I only scratched the surface of what you can do with this, so I want to look a little bit more into it. But I do like the fact that we can set up relationships straight out of the box using this free version. So if we come over and take a look at my properties, for example, I've only got one property at the moment, so we'll open that up. You can see there's my relationship. So I've got one property, one agency, and I've connected the two up. Simple as that. Nice and easy to do. And if we take a look at the amenities here, this is where we've got that sort of clonable field. So let's say I want to add another one in. I can click there. I can now add in what I want. Say so drive in there. So you can see how easy that is. And like I say, in a lot of use cases, that could be all that you need. So we've got a custom post type. We've got a relationship. We've got meta fields connected up to it. We can create taxonomies and so on. Now let's just jump out of this and take a look at how it integrates itself into something like Bricks, and we'll see how you can use it there. So if we come into my templates, I've already created a template for my property archive, and inside there I've got a simple loop set up. And as you can see, there's my Edinburgh Heights, which I've just shown you. So connecting these up, it's just your standard post title, your featured image, your normal content. So that underneath I've got the basic text, and this is where I've just pulled in some data from Metabox Lite. You can see we've got the property price, the number of bedrooms, and so on. So we expand this dynamic data and scroll down. You can see we've got Metabox, estate agents, properties, and agencies, which I do like the fact that this is all organized. So if I open up Metabox estate agents, I only see the information inside there for my estate agents. Same thing goes if I open properties up. You can see there's more fields inside there, including the relationship that I've created. I like that from an organizational point of view, from the ability to be able to easily see exactly what's going on and reference it. Pretty cool, nice and simple. If we take a look, for example, here, this is just using those property amenities, which is that clonable field. So everything works in the same fashion as if you were using the normal better box or you were using something like ACF Free or Pro, you know, any of those tools. If we take a quick look, we'll save this and just preview it. You can see there's my garage on suite sauna and the new one we just added of the drive. There's the price, which is a custom meta field. There's the bedrooms. This is a custom post type with custom information inside there. All works the way you would expect it to, and it integrates nicely into Bricks. So I assume it's probably going to work the same when it comes to Elementor Pro, which also supports Metabox, and any other tools that support Metabox. This is probably going to work in exactly the same way as it has done, just using the free version with this nice UI interface update. So let's wrap things up with my kind of final thoughts on Metabox Lite. First and most importantly, more options is always a good thing for us, the consumer. The fact that you have the Lite version that's now wrapped up in a much nicer UI and UX experience for people like myself that like that kind of visual way of working is only a good thing. I like the fact that we've got so many options, 40 plus different kinds of meta fields, and we can create taxonomies, clonable fields, and relationships all inside this free platform. That is very, very good good. I like some of the options they've got available as well for deleting data that is not used when you remove things like, you know, your relationships and so on. I like to see that. I'm going to try this a little bit more and get a bit more familiar with it and probably create a couple of bits and pieces using this to kind of demonstrate it a little bit better than what I've covered here today. But what don't I like so much about it? I think the UI is still okay. I still think there's, there's room for improvement. Like I've said, there are certain things that when you, you're familiar with it, I think you probably would even overlook it and pay no attention. But when you're new to it, I would like to see things in a little bit more logical fashion. Like I said, with ACF, you can choose when you create things like a taxonomy or custom post that meta fields and so on. You can choose how things associate with other things all on the same screen, and things are just a little bit more intuitive. It's a little gripe, but it's one of those things that's kind of put me off Metabox in the past is that I've always felt that it's just a little bit behind when it comes to the user experience and the user interface 
I'd love to see a little bit more time invested there. Maybe get someone on board that is really strong in that department. Because I think the plugin itself is very, very good. And I know it's a very well respected plugin. So I'm excited to see how this grows and how it's adopted and maybe some of the new features that take it on board and how it expands and so on. But I think it's a good way of getting into working with custom post types and all those kinds of good things. And if Metabox is one of those things that you want to invest in, but you want to try it before you buy it, this is a great way of doing it. Anyway, that's my kind of first look at Metabox Lite and how it works with Bricks Builder. What are your thoughts on this? Have you tried it? Would this give you the opportunity to try it and see if you like it and maybe move up to the full fat version of Metabox? Let me know in the comment section down below. As always, all applicable links are in the description. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.